I'm seriously considering buying this, but you probably shouldn't. I'm considering buying it because, well, I review GPUs, so I have a reason to get this um, uh, um, special GPU from Intel here. <laughs> uh, but this is kind of a big deal. You can finally actually click the Add to Cart button on Intel's ARC A380 GPU. That's right, previously I reported it was available for back order. Well, now it is officially up and running for $140. Now, many people should not buy this. Um, let's get into some of the details. First of all, they do eh, at least put right here that if you don't have a resizable bar enabled system, it's just a no-go. Most of your gaming performance just tanks off of a cliff, so it's not worth it. Now, even then, um, it performs best in games with like a modern API like Vulkan and DX12. Uh, Intel themselves, to their credit, have posted a blog post talking about all of these issues. Um, they're getting questions about why is there a difference between DX11 and DX12, and they're just admitting that, you know, there's a lot of extra software support that they have to do uh, to make DX11 work well, and they expect that to get better slowly over time, uh, but it's just not where it needs to be. Uh, they also talk about the need for resizable bar, um, and they talk about the uh, ah, unreadiness of the drivers, and they just acknowledge that there's huge amounts of work to do, but they are working on it, and they, they have been actually updating their drivers, um, like their August 19th driver fixed a whole bunch of issues, and they're saying that they are listening carefully to reviews, um, even mentioning specifically identifying 43 issues uh, from uh, the Gamers Nexus review, and they've already corrected four of those and 21 UI issues. So they're definitely working on it and also confirming that they do support variable refresh rate display technologies. Now, this particular A380 um, has been tested thoroughly by Hardware Unboxed. Um, TechSpot, uh, I, I think they, you know, the, the, they published the same uh, stuff on TechSpot, so I'm, I'm showing that here. But in a massive head-to-head -head with AMD's Radeon RX 6400, uh, it was 11% slower at 900p and 7% slower on average at 1080p. But as a math teacher, I will confirm for you that averages can hide a lot. And notice just if you look at how many games are actually a win for Intel, uh, it's incredibly small, with the vast majority of these 51 games uh, being a win for AMD, and some of them fairly significantly. And when you add that to all of the driver issues, um, you know, there, there's not a, a big reason to to choose this. <laughs> um, other than if you're someone like me and interested in uh, testing things out. However, I'm going to be honest, guys, I, I, I'm, I'm actually kind of worried to infect my PC with the uh, software for this um, after what I heard from other reviewers. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm honestly, I, I honestly don't even have a GPU uh, to really compare with it because I will mention the one main advantage this has um, over something like the, uh, the 6400 from AMD, which, well, is $10 more. <laughs> Um, but uh, the, other, the main advantage the Intel GPU has is its encoding abilities with newer codecs like AV1 and things like that, and the RX 6400 doesn't even have an encoder. Um, which is an, one reason why I don't actually do, uh, most of my reviews, I do head-to-head -head recordings of, of benchmark footage. I put them side to side, but I record that using the GPU encoders themselves, and the 6400 doesn't even have one. Um, so uh, I don't have one, and I couldn't do my head-to-head -head comparison like I do uh, on my other stuff. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens with it. I did not mean to click on this. Uh, oh, the just GPU thing. That That's a scam. Anyway... <laughs> <laughs> whole other topic. Now, anyway, um, let's go over to Copite because this is a GPU news video, so I have to talk about the latest Copite tweet. Now, what is Copite talking about now? Um, RTX 4080 specs adjusting a little bit more. The main change here is that he's saying 23 gigabit per second GDDR6X um, up from his previously reported 21. Now, a lot of people um, I I've seen in the comments are like, Copite just makes stuff up. He changes things all the time. It's nonsense. 
Well, I'm not gonna completely rule out the possibility that he just makes stuff up, but I don't think that's the case. Not only did he have a good track record with the previous generation, uh, but also it's reasonable to get a whole bunch of different SKUs being tested um, you know, with uh, the products coming out in a few months. Um, so it, it's actually very reasonable that there's a whole bunch of slightly different possibilities for how these various NVIDIA cards will play out. Um, and that he's just reporting the ones that he hears about being tested somewhere in that uh, in that product chain where he has a source. Now, what I also like to see here is this lower uh, total card power at 340 watts, because originally we'd seen much higher power draw numbers from the RTX 4080 rumors. So 340 watts, dare I say, is downright reasonable. That's actually pretty close to the um, 3080, I believe. And um, according to the Copite's leaked uh, performance estimates, uh, I think this is something like expected to be 55 to 60% faster than a 3080. So if that ends up being true, you know, 55 to 60% faster at roughly the same power is actually pretty reasonable. Now, um, the folks over at Video Cards eh, have a uh, nice chart here adjusting the current leaks. So again, that memory speed bumped up from 21 to 23. Now that would change the bandwidth calculation up to 736 gigabytes per second. And like I said, early rumors pointed to 420 watts. Uh, but this is now down to 340 watts. And you can see the estimated time spy scores um, from Copite, if you want to believe those, um, there as well to kind of get an idea of the scaling. Now, uh, let's take a look at this. This is interesting. So GPU pricing has continued to trend down, um, but the first cards to get way below MSRP eh, was um, a lot of like the TI models and, and things like that, that honestly just had incredibly inflated MSRPs in the first place. So um, 3D Center has been tracking GPU prices in Germany uh, for a long time now, and I've been reporting on these over time, but they've actually updated their graph to now be talking about the main lineup of GPUs. This is the 6800, 6800 XT, 3060 Ti, 3070, and 3080 10 gigabyte models. Um, and they're reporting that if you average the best prices for that main lineup uh, that they're seeing in Germany, it's now finally fallen below MSRP. Now again, that still doesn't mean that every model is below MSRP, and these are the best prices. Whenever I report these 3D center graphs, I always get some people from Europe telling me that, that these prices aren't accurate, they're way above that. Um, well, first of all, keep in mind that US MSRPs do not include taxes. Okay, now uh, people are always like, does that mean Americans don't pay taxes? Well, th um, you, the United States doesn't have a uh, entire nationwide sales tax. It's done by individual states. There even are some states like Oregon that don't have any sales tax. Um, although usually other types of taxes are higher, but that's not the point of this video. Uh, the point is that that could be skewing your idea of what the pricing is, but I'll point you to, again, I link all my sources in the description, this 3D Center article, they do specifically talk about um, individual cards, the pricing, their change um, over time, right? Most of them are losing a few percentage points here, and they say what the best price was and the store where they found that at. So if you wanna, you know, I didn't gather this data, 3D Center did, but they are saying where they're getting it from, so there you go. Um, I'd still really like to see prices a lot lower than this as we get closer and closer to the launch of the next generation, but it is really nice to see certain GPUs at least uh, starting to be some pretty decent deals. Now, um, AMD has uh, officially said that they will be t uh, announcing their next generation Ryzen processors on August 29th, but that's not gonna be the actual release date and review embargo. Uh, if you want more information about that, um, there's we still have to go off of rumors. I imagine we'll get the official date at that August 29th event, which isn't too far away now, guys. Um, but anyway, uh, we do have at least one reviewer, it looks like over on the Chip Hell forums, 
uh, suggesting that the review embargo was delayed two weeks from the originally rumored uh, September 15th date, um, and that the reason is due to uh, needing to solve BIOS problems. Now, I have no idea if this is true, but that does place the current uh, rumored release date at September 27th, which is the same day that Intel introduces the uh, Raptor Lake S desktop CPU. So we'll see if that ends up being true. Now, uh, a few little uh, things spotted about the uh, Ryzen 7000 series. We do now have an engineering sample available to buy for the 7600X. Um, <laughs> on some kind of Chinese black market situation over here. And I don't recommend purchasing it for the low price of 10,000 RMB or of over, you know, over 1400 US dollars. Although honestly, I think it's a placeholder price and you're supposed to contact the buyer directly. Um, the 7700X has also been pictured. So you can get a, a nice die shot of that. And then um, another exciting feature of these Ryzen 7000 series uh, uh, chips is that they'll come with new motherboards that will be supporting uh, PCIe Gen 5. And we're seeing several um, uh, a, a PCIe NVMe drive uh, manufacturers talking about the ridiculous speeds that we're going to see from their PCIe Gen 5 SSDs. And we're seeing um, scores of like over 12,000 megabytes per second read and over 10,000 megabytes per second write speeds. Now, who really needs that amount of speed? Um, probably not me, <laughs> but it's kind of cool to see. Now, speaking of the upcoming Intel chips, we have Extreme Player over here on Billy Billy, who has already done some pretty extensive reviews of the upcoming Intel Raptor Lake chips. Um, although, you know, he has like qualification sample and engineering sample chips, which aren't, uh, you know, guaranteed to match exactly to what the final, um, you know, released consumer product will perform like. Um, but he has an update with a uh, 13900KF model, um, uh, overclocking to 6.18 gigahertz uh, on some pretty beefy liquid cooling. And it looks like all of the performance cores were able to hit that number. I could probably zoom in a bit more here for you guys. Um, we're able to hit that number when doing the CPU Z uh, performance test. And the E cores, the, so the efficient cores that are less performant, but there's lots of them, uh, were f hitting uh, 4.6885 gigahertz. So uh, some big speeds there, although it is important to note uh, that, and again, I'm relying on video cards translation of that video because I don't speak Chinese. Um, uh, it was important to note that in Cinebench, the all core top speed actually dropped down to 5.8 gigahertz. Sorry, not the top speed, but the all core speed drops to 5.8 gigahertz. So it doesn't look like that's going to be stable in every single test. And that's now showing this 13900KS qualification sample uh, reaching a single thread score of over 1,000 in CPU Z. So those are some pretty big numbers. I have my uh, lowly little 5950X over here, uh, which is uh, only scores a 647. Although keep in mind that you know this 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 CPU's main feature is its uh, multi-threading. Um, last thing I'll mention is that AMD does have a day uh, day zero driver out for Saints Row if you're going to be playing that. And remember, if you did buy an AMD GPU in the last, uh, I, I forget the exact dates, but month or so, uh, you probably got a free copy of Saints Row. Uh, I did, and so I may or may not have time to test it out on some GPUs and see how it runs, since I did get the game for free, well, free with the purchase of some GPUs. I hope all of you have an excellent day.